Over the next 1,000 years, humanity might evolve to survive a car crash. Maybe we'll adapt to have text claws and a tech neck due to our excessive smartphone usage. Or maybe we'll finally fuse with technology. In this episode, we're going to look at what scientists have theorized might be the next stage of human evolution and find out what the perfect human might look like in the future. For our first future human, let's take a look at Text Claw Mindy. She's got a hunched back, a hand with a permanently molded text claw, and an unnaturally bent smartphone elbow. In 1,000 years, scientists are predicting this might be our reality. But why? Well, the humans who are alive today are wildly different from the humans that were alive thousands or millions of years ago. We're no longer swinging on branches, no longer running away from tigers or fighting them. Today's humans are usually sitting down, eyes glued to a computer all day. This strains your neck and throws your spine out of balance. Humans were built to stand up straight, not be couch potatoes. But maybe future humans will evolve to have a hunchback that would give us an evolutionary advantage in computer work. And since we're always on our phones, we might develop traits like text claw and smartphone elbow. Maybe these traits will pass on to the next generation, creating an army of Mindy-like humans obsessed with their phones, as if we're not already. We've already started blending our bodies with technology, but one day it might be hard to tell where the human ends and the tech begins. I'm not talking about the stereotypical cyborgs you see in movies. I'm talking about something much deeper. What's kind of wacky is how in this kind of tech-heavy world your brain might evolve. Well, let's start with your skull. Studies have shown that radio frequency radiation from smartphones might be damaging your brain. It might make your memory worse or affect your cognitive skills. So Mindy over here was given a thicker skull. This gives her brain protection from potential radiation via phones. And bad news for the brain itself, it's going to get smaller. Yeah, I know this doesn't sound great. I can barely remember where I put my keys, but this is just going to make it worse. Brains today are already much smaller than they used to be. Before the dawn of civilization, human brains had to do a lot more work. Without advanced weapons, we had to use our brains to save ourselves from predators. Without farming, we had to remember where all the good fruit trees were. Well, today, technology does a lot of our thinking for us. We've got calculators, Google Maps, and now AI to do our programming or our homework. Our life today is simpler and safer. With AI, this trend of not having to think as much will continue in the future. But more on that in a bit. What about our overall size? Well, this is a bit of a toss-up because of two opposing trends. On the one hand, life is no longer about the survival of the fittest in terms of size. Humans don't have to be big and strong to beat up tigers or other humans to see another day. It's more important that they're financially savvy to survive. While the threat from predators is reduced, that doesn't mean humans are totally safe. We've got new predators to worry about, ones made by man. Climate change, ongoing wars, a potential nuclear apocalypse. And these threats are likely to continue. So how could humanity evolve in response? Well, surviving climate change might happen two different ways. The first may be to amass wealth and to use that wealth to protect from the effects of climate change. Maybe these humans will be the hunchback computer type with the text claw. They'll be running for their underground bunkers stocked with caviar and sparkling water and shorting stocks. All while tsunamis rage or radiation pulverizes everything. The second group are people who aren't as lucky to hang out in bunkers. They might evolve physical characteristics that help them survive. To see what these may be, let's take a little detour and look at this weird looking guy. Crash Proof Graham. Meet Crash Proof Graham. He's been built by scientists to survive a unique type of devastation, a car crash. It, come to think of it, getting caught in really bad weather is kind of like being in a car crash. Yeah, a tornado can throw you around and injure you quite badly. With climate change, 
The frequency of devastating hurricanes, tornadoes, and other extreme weather events is on the rise. Without that underground bunker, we can look to Graham as a potential way humans could evolve to survive. Let's take a look at his brain. Graham is able to survive devastating impacts because his brain is encased in a bigger, thicker skull, one with more fluid around it to cushion the brain, and more ligaments to hold it in place. It sounds like this would allow the brain to survive all sorts of things. Car crashes, tornadoes, maybe even earthquakes. Then we get to the neck. This is a particularly vulnerable part of the body. If your head whips back and forth, there's a lot of pressure on the vertebrae in your neck, and they can break. So a short, thick neck, or even better, no neck at all, might be a survival advantage. Graham also has stronger ribs that could help his body survive a high-impact crash, plus a thick layer of tough skin that would protect against cuts and injuries. And then there's a really weird trait that might create a unique evolutionary advantage. Joints that bend in multiple directions. Today, our knee and elbow joints only fold in one direction, so impact from the wrong direction can make them break. If we took these flexible joints from Graham, it could help us survive whatever's coming our way in the next 1,000 years. Of course, it may take longer than just 1,000 years for these traits to evolve, but maybe, given the rate at which the planet is warming, we'll start to evolve these survival traits much faster. I'm especially thinking about the billions of people in the world who will have to brave the elements as things get worse. The one difficulty that crash-proof Graham might have as evolution perfects his disaster-resistant body? He, he might have trouble getting a date. Okay, is there another version of future human who could evolve to be better than today's model? Maybe modern gene splicing techniques can help build a new perfect version of you, but one who's a little hotter than Texclaw Mindy and Crash Proof Graham. Anatomically amazing Alice. Here's Alice. She's the brainchild of Dr. Alice Roberts, who came up with a new, better design for the human body cleaning up the messy bits from what evolution gave us. Her perfect body would take the eyes from an octopus, allowing us to see better. The next fix would be our ears. When you're young, you hear pretty well, but as you age, tiny hair cells in your inner ears get worn out, so your hearing gets worse. Instead of trying to make those little cells regrow, we could just get bigger ears. You know, like a cat. These would be better at amplifying sound. <laughs> I gotta admit, they look pretty cool. Then there's the throat. Perfect Alice has two separate pipes, one for air and another for food. Fine by me. Okay, and now for something special that's got to do with babies. No, not that. The human pelvis evolved to support us properly while walking upright, but it definitely doesn't have room for one thing. Large-headed babies which is what humans tend to have. This makes childbirth pretty difficult, so I've heard. The perfect human body would borrow a trick from the kangaroo. How about a little pouch? This way we could give birth to smaller babies at a younger stage and have them mature in our pouch, just like marsupials do. Then there's our skin. If you're kind of fair-skinned like me, you can get sunburnt and be at risk of skin cancer. Yikes. One solution is to just go for darker skin, which doesn't burn as easily. But even cooler might be to borrow another trait from the octopus. It can change its skin color. Now with that trait, light-skinned people can keep their light color in winter and get darker in the summer for protection. Finally, the human leg could do with a fix. Yeah, they're slow and tough to move. Ostrich-like legs might be the solution. We make the lower leg less muscly and make the feet light so they're better equipped to run. The final touches are shorter, chimpanzee-like spines, which are less likely to get compressed as we age. But sorry, that means no slender waists for anyone. Hearts with more interlinked arteries so you never get a heart attack, and air sacs like what birds have rather than our lungs. Anatomically Amazing Alice looks pretty cool. If scientists begin to splice some genes, 
we might just get to this point in the next 1,000 years. But wait a minute, with advances in biomedical research, we've already begun fusing technology with the human body. What are some of these modifications we're likely to see in the future? Transhumanic Tim. Meet Transhumanic Tim, whose body is part human, part machine. They're merged with technology so they can see better, hear better, remember more, run faster, fight disease better, and even more amazing, live forever. Maybe Tim will wear a modern hearing aid, which will not only amplify sounds that are far away, it can record sound and create white noise. Today, bionic eyes help blind people see. They're surgically implanted devices that improve sensitivity to light so that people can distinguish between shapes and tell the difference between a knife and a fork. But in future, these kinds of implants will help transhumanic Tim see things they've never seen before. X-ray vision can become Tim's reality. Tomorrow's enhanced human might also have implanted devices that improve memory. In 1,000 years, maybe we'll all have that skill. Today, scientists are making prosthetic devices implanted in the brain that can decode how you store memories, then apply neurostimulation to help the person retrieve those memories later. As the technology gets better, we'll each have a built-in encyclopedia. And our ability to fight diseases will be better than ever. Not only will this help humans live longer, but potentially forever. Not living forever in your regular human body, but uploading your brain to a server. Now, this would be incredibly complex because of the sheer volume of information in our brains. But let's say we somehow crack that code. We manage to find a way to upload all of our information to some storage space. What's next? Assuming that humans 1,000 years from now aren't regenerating our limbs, where would our brains go? Would they sit in a computer? Or go into a new robotic body? That will be the last stage of transhumanic Tim, and it'll last forever. Now, all these evolutionary upgrades are pretty incredible, but can we do better? The perfect future human. Okay, now that we've learned a bit more about what the next 1,000 years will bring, it's time to build our own version of the perfect future human. Let's take the bits we like the best. Physically speaking, this human will be taller. Yeah, the challenges with climate change may favor smaller humans for a little while, but better nutrition and natural selection will push for greater height. I like the bigger eyes and feline ears from Alice. I'm not sure everyone needs x-ray vision, but Maybe if you're going to med school, you get equipped with bionic eyes. Our future human definitely needs a thicker skull, protecting a smaller brain, but with much bigger brain power, because they're equipped with a memory-enhancing prosthetic that gives them that photographic memory. This makes school a breeze and puts Google Maps out of business. Plus, it has another advantage. Since we future humans will be able to remember a lot, we're not on the phone all the time, so no text claw for future human, and no hunched back. With massive tsunamis, storms, and tornadoes happening more frequently in the future, our future humans need to stay strong. So I'm going with the heavy-duty rib cage and the shorter spine, two features that will protect and age well. Thanks for that idea, Graham. As for the marsupial pouch, I'm thinking about that one. As brains shrink, well, maybe babies' heads will get smaller and regular childbirth will be easier. If not, I'm definitely including a pouch, so childbirth is not as painful as it is today. Both crash-proof Graham and anatomically amazing Alice had noted improvements with legs and feet, so our future humans will have those. Knees that bend any which way, slimmer ostrich-like calves and lighter springy feet. I'm also going with a set of multi-purpose nanobots that roam inside the future human body. They can decimate a tumor, reduce inflammation when they see it, and generally enhance the body's immune system. All right, our future human looks pretty cool, ready to take on the terrifying challenges of 3000 AD. Like for instance, what if there were a catastrophic situation where land and water switched places overnight? Would our human survive? Well, that's a story for another What If.